It's a great pleasure to introduce our guest today. Uh, I'm going to get this right. Pastor Ruel Chrysostomo Barte uh, is with us. Pastor Ruel uh, is in the Philippines. He pastors City of David Church in Philippines. And uh, we had the opportunity to meet for the first time about four years ago. Uh, Pastor Ruel came and he ministered to our Filipino fellowship. And by the way, I, I want to take a moment and I want to say how deeply, deeply I appreciate all of our beautiful Filipino brothers and sisters who are part of Harvest Time Church. All, all 22 years that we've been here, we've had beautiful, and I want to say my Filipino brothers and sisters have been such wonderful servants in this church, givers, uh, evangelists, you know, Koreans have the ministry of prayer. Filipinos have the ministry of evangelism. They really do. I think it's an anointing. And uh, we love you, our precious Filipino brothers and sisters. I met Pastor Ruel four years ago and heard him minister. And, um, you know, some people, when you meet them, there's just an instant connection, a bond in this spirit. And a friendship was born. Uh, we were just starting this project then. And for these last few years, Pastor Ruel has been following us on Facebook. I know part of the reason that this building is here is because we've had friends all around the world who have been praying for us all the way through this project. And Pastor Ruel and his congregation are some of those friends who have prayed for us the entire time. Um, Denise was, uh, every Sunday morning she prays at six o'clock with a, a little group of people. And uh, when she came from prayer this morning, she said to me, honey, she said, I have to be in the sanctuary today because I know that Pastor Ruel has a word in season for our congregation. I know you just got settled, but would you just for a moment stand on your feet and give your best welcome to our friend Pastor Ruel from Philippines. Praise be to God. Will you remain standing with me? Remain standing. A little. Let's pray. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are good. You are wonderful. You are excellent. We thank you, Lord, that you are with us today and you are for us today and you are on our side. Thank you, Lord, that you have brought a lot of people here today to just commune with you. Holy Spirit, we welcome you in this place. Let the weight of your glory fall on us today. Father, let, that we may hear from you, that our faith may rise, that our, our lives be changed, our minds be renewed. Father, let your name be glorified and magnified. Let the church be uh, revitalized and edified. And let the enemy be terrified. Father, thank you, Lord, for today. We bless you. We honor you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Can you say to your neighbor the title of the sermon today? You are set apart. Tell your neighbor you are set apart. Okay, that's the wrong neighbor. Tell the other neighbor. Okay, still the wrong neighbor. Tell the other neighbor at the back. You are set apart. Praise God. You may take your seat now. Blessed be the name of the Lord God. Blessed be the name of the Lord God. Congratulations to your new wonderful worship hall. This is so, so wonderful. It is so, so wonderful. And yes, I've met Pastor Glenn uh, through Brother Nolan, one of your ushers here, one of, one of the uh, handsome Filipino ushers you have here. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord for, for their lives. And the sermon that I'm going to talk about is from uh, the book that I, that I wrote called Worthy of the Call. Um, yeah. <laughs> so uh, it is a, it's a, it's a message that the Lord has given me and it's been burning in me for so many years. So today I'd like to talk about it in uh, Exodus chapter 33 verses 7 till 9. Exodus 33 verses 7 till 9. If you don't have a Bible, sell your car. Get a Bible. So if you don't want to do that, just download the app uh, from your, uh, your whatever, iPads or, or iPhones, whatever. So let's just get to reading the Word of God. Exodus chapter 33, 7 till 9. I'm going to read it in New uh, King James Version. Now Moses used to take the tent and set it up far away from the other tents. He called it the meeting tent. Anyone who wanted to meet with the Lord would go away from the other tents to the meeting tent. Eight. 
when Moses went out to the tent, all the people would get up and stand at the doors of their tents, and they would watch Moses until he went into the meeting tent. Verse 9, whenever Moses went into the meeting tent, the cloud would come down and stand at the door of the tent, and the Lord would speak with Moses. Now, what is going on in the Philippines right now is that we we praise God because the last weekend we had such a great storm coming in. Uh, actually, we had four typhoons who just came one after the other, and the Philippines has suffered so much rain and so much flooding that even our city was up to waist deep of, of flood. Uh, but we praise God that uh, there's no casualties that was reported. Uh, however, some, some of the houses were down, cars were down, but we praise God uh, for, for His faithfulness, you know. And our church back home uh, have this uh, mission of sending kids to college. A while ago, I was being toured by Pastor Nick downstairs, and you have such great facilities, and, you know, the classrooms are great. Please support it. Please uh, be in it and, you know, not just send, sending your children, but, you know, volunteer yourself also. And, of course, we need money to finish it. <laughs> it's not going to grow on trees. <laughs> Actually, the church has money. It's in your pockets, though. You got to give to the Lord. Amen? Amen. The time you were justified through faith, in Jesus Christ, you were called out by the Lord. A privilege only given to few, okay? You are chosen, you are predestined to be in the service of our God. God is holy and you need to be holy as well. Not by lips, not by whatever, but also in deed and in mind and in everything. You as a child of God must be holy as your father is. A while ago, I was telling Pastor Glenn and Sister Denise for uh, first service, like, see that lanky guy playing the bass guitar? He just looks like you, Pastor. And I said, oh, it's, he's my son. <laughs> oh, okay. I see the resemblance. You should also be have the resemblance of God. You are a child of God. Yeah. Amen. So if God is holy, we should be holy as well. We are called to be set apart for God. Now we read that Moses used to take his tent away from the camp and build it somewhere else. Now the, one of the things that I appreciate from the Lord is he gave us the power of imagination. You know, if you can imagine with me that here he is, he's dismantling his tent. Now you can, now you can imagine this tent is not from Ikea. It's not from Best Buy. No. It is a whole house of a tent that he dismantles. And you got to imagine also that he is almost 90 years old this time. Anybody here is over 90? So you guys are all teenagers. You guys are young. You got a young church here, Pastor. He was almost, he was over 90 years old. He dismantles everything. You can imagine that he walks by out of the camp, an old man, and then set it up again, away from the tent. That is called set apart. When the Lord said, live holy for me, it means you should be away from the system, from all of all of this this things that we grew up with and be with the Lord. That's what it meant when we are to live a holy, holy life. The Bible says in Psalms chapter 1 verses 1 and 2, it says, Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. You have to be set apart. You are in this world, but not of this world. A lot of Christians got it differently you know so a lot of people got it differently oh i'm in this world so i have to you know what the music is that's the dance no 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 no, no. you might be here on earth and you know have your career have your studies have your relationship have whatever but you are not of this world 
You should live a life that is holy and pleasing and acceptable to God. Job, in fact, makes 10 altars every morning. What does he do? He sacrifices to the Lord each one altar for his kids. It is very important that you as a parent, as parents, you should pray for your children. Job said they might be sinning against God. So I pray for them, Lord. The problem with Americans today, you're, I'm Filipino, so I can say this. <laughs> I can say this. You are so loose. Last time I checked, Pastor, Pastor, you know, ADHD. You know, kids running around, you know, pulling tantrums and whatever. The last time I checked, back home, the only, the only uh, cure for ADHD is a belt. When my father says, you stop that or I'll get the belt, we stop. But here, no. Oh, I have to call 911 because I got bitten by my parents. What the heck? <laughs> Hallelujah. We should live a life that is set apart. Going to the tenth meeting is your time with God. This is the encounter meeting with the divine. The supernatural encounters the natural. The, the ordinary meets the extraordinary. It is a time for God. The tent meeting, that's why I always say, I always say, you are not exempted in Bible studies. Oh, come on now. If you agree with me, say amen. If you don't, no. Oh, by the way, if you feel that you are tired and I, I'm boring you, you can sleep. Just don't snore. Okay? So, you're not exempted in Bible studies. Young man, young woman, you're not exempted. Pastor Glenn mentioned that every Sunday at 6 o'clock, Pastor Denise prays with some people. I pray that there will come a time that half of this church will come at 6 a.m. on Sundays and pray. You are not exempted in prayer meetings. It is your time with God. Oh, pastor, I pray at home every... Praise God, but it's so different when you are in an army of prayer warriors. It just sets fire on you. It sets fire on you. So Moses goes and meet up with God at the tent of meeting. It says, anyone who wanted to meet with God would have to go away. From the other tents. My Bible and yours say that when you pray, you go to your closet. Meaning you leave this, this room and go to your closet. There is a separation. So pastor, that means if I live holy to the, with, uh, to the Lord, I don't have to be friends with my friends in the world. No, that's what I meant. No. It means that when you go to your closet and be with the Lord and experience an encounter with God, you come out with that, with that encounter into the world. You are the light and the salt of the world. You bring that light. You bring that salt with you in the world. It's that you are influence, been influenced by, but you are influencing it. That is living a holy life. You ever wonder why you get so frustrated, depleted, and lost? You need to leave the cares of this world and be with God. It's so sad that sometimes even if you're in church, you know, all, you know, oh, I have to put this email on. Oh, when does the pastor end? Oh, I have to do this. Oh, I have to do that. When you're with God, leave everything. I love gossip. I don't participate, but I love listening. <laughs> I, and I know you guys do too. But there is a way, you know, in the Bible that we can listen in. You know, when Moses went to the tent meeting, you can listen in what, the, what God is and, and Moses were talking about. Oh, did you know, of course you know, that when you pray, God answers. He still answers. And he still heals. He still provides. He still protects. Hallelujah. Even today. Hallelujah. Do not come, oh, I'm 
this before, you know, today is a different day. No, it's the same. God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He answers prayers. The problem is you don't pray. Oh, the problem is you don't pray enough. So don't leave Denise praying by herself on Sunday. Will you come Sunday? Thank you for one woman who said amen. How about the others? Will you join your pastor's wife in prayer on Sunday? Thank you for the three other women. I'm challenging you today, my friends. Hallelujah. Anyway, in Exodus chapter 33, 13 to 16, let's listen in to the conversation of God and, and Moses. Exodus 13, thir uh, 33, 13 to 16. So I pray to you, if I have found favor in your eyes, let me know your ways, that I may know you and find favor in your eyes. And keep in mind that this nation is your people. The lands. The Lord said, I myself will go with you, and I will give you rest. Then Moses said to him, if you yourself do not go with us, do not have us leave this place. For how will it be known that I and your people have found favor in your eyes? Unless you go with us, then I and your people will be different from all the other people of the earth. You know, the prayer of Moses was, Lord, let me know your ways. If I have found favor in you, let me know your ways that I may find favor in you. You know, to me, that's an odd prayer. He said, if I have found favor, let me know your ways so I may find favor. The heck? He already found favor, and yet he's praying for another favor. And God said, okay, I'll give you rest. You know what I found out? Ask me why. What? I found out that a favor is a rest. You know, when you ask people, can you do me a favor, do this for me, run to the groceries you know, and get this for me, it's a favor. What do you do? You rest. Right? Right? Am I correct? Yeah. Again, if you, are, if you agree with me, say amen, okay? So I know that I'm talking to someone. All right? Hallelujah. You know, when you ask favor, you know, you don't have to look for favor because somebody's doing it for you. But the thing is, God said, and Moses said, let me know your ways. I remember, I remember when, when me and my wife got married. You know, she's a beautiful woman. She is a, a very ladylike. You know, you don't see her not a, being a lady even tonight, uh, even today. So uh, there are so much things that I do not know about her. But when we got married, I fell in love more of her because she's Norse. She, she sleeps like a woman, like a lady, and then I fell in love more with her. I found, I found that she's like that when she sleeps. I found her way. You know, when she chews, she always chews on the left. And, you know, I, I, I find out that her ways, her eyes were dark brown. Men. What is the color of, of the eyes of your women, of your wife? Don't look now. <laughs> now, us men, we need to look the eyes of your wives when we talk to them. Now, so you can know. Moses said, let me know your ways so that I may find favor. You know why? Because favor no, don't last long. They don't last long. You need to ask another favor from God. But you know what? Sometimes you will say, I, I'm coming here, Pastor. You don't know my pain, Pastor. You don't know what I'm going through, Pastor. But the Lord has been good to me. Yes, yes, the Lord has been good to you. That's why if you are here, you raise your hand. You praise God with all your might because He has been good to you. He's been faithful to you. He heals you. He provides for you. He protects you. He brings you up from the fiery clay. Now, what you should do is look up, have a pew check. Have a pew check. If somebody doesn't praise like you, ask the usher to move you. Because those people might not like praising God. You came here to worship the Lord and you should worship the best way you can. Hallelujah. Because God always gives you the best. God always gives you the best. That's why he said, I will, uh, uh, Moses said, please let me know your ways. I forgot, what day is your, 
your Bible studies and classes here, it's there. Attend. Sign up. So you would know the ways of God. Amen? Amen. Thank you again for the five people said amen. How about you guys in the back? What are you guys doing? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's continue listening in to the Lord and Moses in Exodus 33 verses 18 to 20. Moses said, I pray to you, show me your shining greatness. 19, and God said, I will have my goodness pass in front of you. I will make the name of the Lord known in front of you. I will have loving kindness and love and pity for anyone I want to. But he said, you cannot see my face for no man can see me and live. Wait a minute. Moses prayed a very, very exciting prayer for God. It's a very exciting prayer for God. Yeah, you know, have, do you pray exciting prayers to God? Oh, Lord, I don't have payment for my mortgage. That's not exciting to God. I mean, he does that every day. That's not exciting. Oh, Lord, I have a toothache. Heal me, Lord. That's not exciting to God. It's not. The thing that excites God is something that never, never been heard before. Just like Moses, he prayed, I want to see you, Lord, face to face. Not in dreams, not in, in, in visions. I want to see you face to face. It excited God. There should be more exciting prayers in you to give God. Oh, you know. One day, my, my wife said, honey, can you go run to the grocery and get me cooking oil? I said to myself, what the heck? A cooking oil? We have a 15-year-old son. She, he can go there, you know, get the cooking oil for her you. Of course, I said that in my mind. Because if I say blurt, you know, I'll be in trouble. You know, so I, so I said, you know, honey, I have, a, I have a suggestion. Ask your son, you know, to, to get you the cooking oil. Because you know, to me, it's, oh, man, it's nothing. I'm a, a man of the house, I, you know, and all of this. So it's so small for me. You know, but if she asked me, honey, can you make me cooking oil? Oh, that's exciting. <laughs> I would take her on that. When we pray, pray something that excites God. You have to excite God. And what excites God is with faith. That's why Moses said, let me see you face to face. The danger there is no one has ever done that. If every, anyone would see God face to face, they would die. So it was so exciting to God. That's why God said, oh, yes, I will make my goodness pass in front of you. My loving kindness, my, 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 love, my pity kindness will pass with you. It's an exciting thing for God. We need to pray exciting prayers to God. Don't, don't pray for mortgages. He provides that already. Don't pray for it. He provides... Ask the Lord, Lord, revive the dead through me. That's exciting. Because the Bible says signs and wonders shall follow you. That's exciting to God. Lord, open up the door of evangelism to this country through me. Ooh. Ooh. I was just talking to Pastor Glenn and I, I, I forgot again her name. Uh, who does your mission. Rosanna, there you go. And, and she said, you know, we're, we're praying for another country to minister to. And I said, please consider the Philippines. Please consider the Philippines. We need uh, passionate people for the Lord in the Philippines. We need ministers in the Philippines. We have places in the Philippines that never had doctors before. Can you imagine 12 children all born at the house? No medical doctor helping. Can you imagine? We need you there. So if you, if you plan to come to the Philippines, hit me up. I'll, I'll pick you up from the airport. <laughs> Myself. My, my house is 15, away, uh, 15 minutes away from the airport. And I can pick you up and let's minister to the Philippines. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> Praise be to God. The Lord answers. The Lord answers. He is not just good. The way we, 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 we worship Him is not just good. He is the embodiment of goodness. He said, I will have my goodness pass by you. He is not just good. He is the embodiment of goodness. I remember North Korea. Ever been to North Korea before? 
Neither do I. I haven't been there. But I always see at the news, you know, what Kim Jong-un does, you know, he make all the military pass by, you know, all his uh, military people, the Marines, and then they have the tanks, and then they have the guns, and then they have the nuclear power. It's a parade itself, uh, flexing their, their military muscle. When the Lord said, I will have my goodness pass over you, he was showing off. It got God excited and he said, I will show my goodness to you. Pass by you. My land shall pass be known. It's a show off. You came here today so that God can meet you. God is showing you off what he can do to you. He's showing off, oh, I can heal you today. That ails you. I can bring relationship into one whole united relationship for you. I can come to you and heal your wounds, your emotional wounds, your depression. I am here to tell you the enemy is a liar. He's been trying to kill you since last year. He's been trying to kill you since last month. I am telling you, he's a liar. God is here for you. He's not against you. God is here working in your behalf. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. He's working in your behalf. Can you imagine? At the back of the scene, God is there for you. He loves you. The problem is we don't run to him. We run the other way. Especially men. Oh, man, you know, we macho men, you know. We don't go to churches. You know. No. Nah. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Come to God. He's got the best intention for you. And if this is the first time for you to come, this is your, and if you don't know why you're here, I'm telling you why. God brought you here not by accident, but he's got a purpose for your life. And that purpose starts when you run to him. When you give your life to him, you will see that everything that's happening around you will come together for your good. Because you chose to be with him. You chose to be with God on the side of the winner. Did you hear me? Did you hear me? If you choose to be side of the winner, oh, you, should, you will not be sitting down like, he's cute. You know, the pastor from the Philippines is cute. No! You know, the last time I checked, pastor, when you're a winner, and the winner shout! Oh, hallelujah, are there any winners here? Yes, give God a shout of praise. You are with God. You are for God. And God is for you. He's beside you. He works in your behalf. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. He said, I will have my name known. His name is his character. He is the lover of your soul. Oh, Rabba Shanda He's the lover of your soul. He doesn't matter what you have done in the past. What matters is today. What matters is today. How are you and your relationship with God? You came here today, not an accident. But it is the will of God for you to be here. So you can do right with God. Do right with your creator. You are here because God wants you to be here. And he wants to make new things for your life. But the thing is, you have to live a separate life from this world system. The world system. You young people, if you have a girlfriend, don't have sex. Come on now. If you have a boyfriend, don't have sex. If you are married, stop fooling around. You have work, don't cheat the... the don't cheat the clock. If you're late, you're late. You are a Christian. You need to live a right, holy life. I'm going to say something that is not hurt so much. Pay your taxes correctly. Hallelujah. Set an example. For the next people, hallelujah, hallelujah, come to God, call on to God. He will not turn his back on you. He will meet you where you are today. 
And I'm going to close with this. You know, in Exodus 3.3.15, then Moses said to him, if you yourself do not go with us, do not have us leave this place. Do not have us leave this place. Moses was hooked. Moses got the foretaste of what it is to come. Moses saw that was that what was better than the promised land that flows with milk and honey. He chose a, a better situation. And that is where God is. He chose God rather than the blessing of Abraham. He chose God where you are, Lord. I want to be there. If you're not going to be with us, Lord, I will not move. When God, where God is, it is better than anything the world could offer. It is way better than what your office can offer. It is way better than the things you think this world can offer. And I love this song. I really love this hymn. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in His wonderful face. And the things of this world, video games, cars, career, money, relationships, anything that the world can give will grow strangely dim in the light of His glory and grace. God said, if you will seek me with all your heart, you shall find me. God is here today. You are at the right place. You're not in a hospital. You're not in jail. You're not in some rehab. But you're in the presence of God. You're at the right place. I praise God you're not in a cemetery right now. But you're in God's presence where there is life. The thing is, you, your body might be here, but your mind or your heart might be somewhere else. But I'm going to take this challenge to you. I'm giving you this challenge. If this is your first time here and you want to get right with God, I want you to come over and let me pray for you. Get right with God. Or if you've been here before and then you lost your way somehow, and you're here today, and you want to get started with God again, please come and let me pray for you. Shall you stand? Please? Shall all, all of us stand? God wants you to receive the best from Him. But you got to take it. You got to give your life to Him. And start a life that is pleasing only to Him. A life that is set apart. A life that is holy. A life that can start over. Father, I want to start over. Young man, young woman, if you're here and you're not um, uh, uh, sure, if, you're, if you are right with God, then do it today. It's free. And God is waiting for you. We're going to sing this song one more time. And I'm going to give you three counts. If you're that person and I want you to come, please step up. Step outside and come and let me pray for you. Thank you.